I'm Ann Charles. I'm Keith Ghostland. And I'm Linda <clears throat> Quinlan. Welcome to All Things LBGTQ. It is Tuesday, April 16th, and we are taping at Orca Media, which we acknowledge as unceded indigenous land. So, Ann, what do you have from us from around the world? Well, I have an announcement. The gang's all here. Welcome yeah. back, Keith and Linda. <laughs> So the group is complete, ah. and we're on a roll. Um, I have headlines, um, starting with international headlines. Um, I have a lot of material this show, but I'll start with uh, the. So what else is new? <laughs> I know. I'm just going to have to cut me I'm off. I'm you sure. off. Yeah. Um, the United Nations has adopted a historic first ever resolution on the rights of intersex people. It's about time. Um, the resolution is titled Combating Discrimination, Violence, and Harmful Practices Against Intersex Persons. And it recognizes that intersex people exist in every society and that they face multiple and intersecting forms of discrimination in all areas of life, such as access to education, health, employment, sports, and social security, as well as restrictions on the exercise of legal capacity and in access to remedies and justice. It expresses grave concerns about harmful practice, practices, including medically unnecessary or deferrable yeah. interventions, yeah. which may be irreversible. And uh, even though people are getting wise to that, it's still going on. Uh, and about 1.7% of people are born with variations in sex characteristics, which is known as the intersex trait. And doctors have performed these awful yeah. normalizing surgeries, uh, which are irreversible. When they're babies, right? Mm -hmm, often. At birth, yes. Despite control, con growing consensus that the surgery should end, global progress is slow. Um, some parents continue to face pressure from surgeons to choose uh, these operations for their children who are too young to participate in the decision. Mm. So a coalition of 35 civil society organizations from around the world issued a statement praising the resolution. It was brought by Finland, South Africa, Chile, and Australia. A majority of states, including the US, voted for it. None voted against it. So that's a rare gesture of anonymity at the UN. And now I hate to report on this, but it's international news involving the Pope. <laughs> Gender affirming surgery oh. threatens unique dignity of a person. So the Vatican has once again shown its right wing um, character. The Vatican has issued a strong warning against what he, they call gender theory and said that any sex change intervention risks threatening the unique dignity of a person in a new document signed off and approved by Pope Francis. <clears throat> and this whole document, titled Infinite Dignity, and of course there's a Latin name, um, focuses on what it describes as a range of threats to human dignity, including poverty, the death penalty, war, assisted dying, abortion, sexual abuse, and the abuse of women, and also gender-affirming surgery. Um, it, the text was published on Monday. Um, Spoke, the Pope has spoken out strongly against what they call gender ideology in the past, describing it as ugly, for erasing what he says are distinctions between a man and a woman. The latest Vatican document quotes Francis by describing it as uh, ideological colonization. While he's been critical of gender theory, and this is odd, uh, he's also provided pastoral support for transgender Catholics. He meets with a group of transgender Catholics south of Rome uh, regularly, inviting them to lunch in the Vatican, <laughs> along with this is, along with 1,200 marginalized and homeless people, and giving them front row seats at one of his, this audiences. So you know he, he he invites transgender people and 1,200 of their good friends. 
Um, the Vatican's doctrine office also recently allowed that transgender people can be godparents at baptisms and witnesses to marriages. A change from the 2015 yeah. rule that the Vatican yeah. said that transgender people couldn't be godparents. The latest document identifies various violations to human dignity, uh, including uh, trends where people's personal lives are laid bare and combed over anonymously in the digital world. It cites the death penalty, which he has condemned repeatedly. Um, he's changed Catholic teaching to make the death penalty inadmissible. Well, I get behind that, um, although some conservative Catholics oppose that. Um, the document also addresses surrogacy, which it says violates both the dignity of the child and the woman who becomes a mere subservient to the arbitrary gain or desire of others. Well, the Italian government agrees with that, too. That's right. So the Pope wants surrogacy banned. Um, and they, uh, it, as I said, it opposes euthanasia. Um, the text opposes the decriminalization of homosexuality um, and uh, homosexuality. Did I say that? Yeah. <laughs> it's saying it should be denounced as contrary to human dignity. The fact that in some places not a few people are imprisoned, violated, tortured, or even deprived of the good of life solely because of their sexual orientation. Still, um, I think the Vatican remains on the right. They have a few... Well, the death penalty gesture, I agree with, but the rest of it is. Well, not beating up women is another one. Well, I was going to say, listening to the flow of the story, it comes across as having inherent conflict within itself and coming across as a very schizophrenic process. I know it. And th th where you're looking for the consistency, it then slips a little to the side. So, okay. Yeah. I know, and I think it's a PR thing. You know, we're judicious, we're not right wing, which they are, you know, it's a disguise, if you ask me. Of course, I have strong views. Let's go to Europe, shall we? Um, where a landmark vote for a trans rights law has occurred in Germany. Um, it allows transgender and non binary people to modify their legal documents to reflect their gender identity through an administrative procedure based on self-identification. So this is the wave of the future, I think. In the past, uh, Germany had a 1980 transsexual law that said you had to provide a local court with two expert reports oh. attesting to a high degree of probability that the applicant won't want to go back to the other gender. Um, the German court had struck down other draconian aspects of the law, including surgical requirements for gender yeah. recognition. Um, this reform comes as lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender activists warn of an uptick in anti-LGBTQ violence in Germany. The federal um, interior minister said in June 2023, in the preceding year, the police registered over 1,400 hate crimes against LGBTQ people. Several attacks incur occurred at pride parades in recent years, one of which ended in the death of a trans man in 2022. A growing, this is a wave, a growing number of countries have removed burdensome requires for legal gender recognition, the Pope not notwithstanding, <laughs> including medical or psychological evaluation. Countries such as Argentina, Belgium, Denmark, Ireland, Luxembourg, Malta, Norway, and Portugal, Spain, and Uruguay provide for simple administrative legal gender recognition processes based on self-declaration. What a concept. <laughs> so it seems like the trend is going forward, even though there are outliers in Rome. Um, more European news. Four same-sex couples in Lithuania are turning to the European Court of Human Rights over the legislation of same-sex partnerships and marriage. They're demonstrating the registration of a civil, they're demanding the res registration of a civil partnership, the inclusion of a marriage contracted abroad in, civil, in the civil registry, and recognition and registration of same-sex marriage in 
Lithuania. In a, same, in a separate case, a same-sex couple is trying to ensure the rights of a mother and the child she carried. The year-long litigation marathon clearly shows the reasons why trust in the courts is so low in Lithuania. International law does not work in Lithuania, one of the petitioners said. For the first time in Lithuania's history, the Justice Ministry has supported same-sex families, which is very encouraging. Uh, however, Lithuanian courts still seem to prefer, prefer Russia's position on the family. The statement also pointed, out, also pointed out that 16 of 27 EU countries have legalized same-sex marriage, and 24 of the 27 EU member states recognize some form of same-sex family. In Lithuania, civil partnership is currently not available for either same-sex or opposite-sex couples, and the Lithuanian parliament is currently debating a civil union bill, so these couples are challenging. Um, we have to move on now, Anne. Really? Yes. All right. So, so the trivia question, during April, we will be recognizing Independent Bookstore Recognition Day. So, this was the first LGBTQ plus bookstore in the US. Bonus points <clears throat> if you know the year it opened and is it still open? Hold on to that. So Rainbow Umbrella Women's Discussion Group, I saw you brought back some notes that you thought you had lost. Thank you very much. Book Discussion Group, still the same book? No, Terminal Velocity by Blanche McGorry Boyd. All right, and, and you like this author? Mm-hmm. All right. We're reading the sequel, actually, of her oh. trilogy. Okay, very good. So April is also Sexual Violence Awareness Month, and that's why the teal ribbon. Mosaic and Barry, they are doing some phenomenal work with a lot of focus on the LGBTQ plus queer communities. The first thing that's happening is on Monday, April 22nd, 6 p.m., and this is by donation, but you really need to go on their line and reserve the tickets. Have you heard of this? In the name of forgotten women? No. No. A choreo poem to restore the feminine in the world, wow. written by Cindy Williams Gutierrez, in the name of forgotten women bears witness to the global oppression and resilience of women, featuring individual and collective voices of seven diverse women. Wow. This multimedia choreo poem is embedded with ritual, dramatizing poetry with music, movement, and projection, and culminating in a compelling call to action. Wow. And, and the poster will be up during that site. <coughs> this looks just amazing. And where is this again? It's going to be at the Savoy. Really? Wow. So the other thing they're doing, and I love this, consent and cookies. <laughs> and it's Thursday, April 18th from 5 to 7 at Lawson's Finest Liquids in Waitsfield. And then again, Wednesday, April 24th, 5 to 7 at Bar Hill. The community is invited to engage in an interactive way to learn about and practice consent. Mosaic will have a table with free cookies and an invitation to decorate and eat cookies while learning about <laughs> consent. I, I like how they're switching things. April 27th, starting at 6 p.m. at the Plainfield Opera House, which is the Old Town Hall, live storytelling. Mm -hmm. Remember Journey into Korea. Yeah. Come listen to performers tell stories about starting from scratch, second chances, and redemption. They are suggesting a sliding scale, five to $20, but anything is gonna be accepted. May 10th will be the Take Back the Night March. They and haven't done that for ages. Where? It's going to be here in Montpelier, wow. and it's our youth yeah, who is organizing it. And there's going to be time for making banners, making posters, a march through Montpelier, and a speak out at the State House. Great. And just I'm, Women Unite, Take Back the Night? It's Take Back the Night. Anyone, is everyone is invited to come. Okay. And then 
keep on your calendars Thursday, June 6th. I know that's in the future. Mosaic lost their building during the July flooding. Wow. It was so heavily damaged that there was no way that they could renovate it. But they found someone who was willing to buy it, had the resources to rehab it. It will become affordable housing. And Mosaic has found new space for their offices and their shelter program. Nice. Great. So, and the location hasn't been disclosed yet, but that will be forthcoming. Lost Nation Theater through the 21st is still I Am My Own Wife. And anybody reading on Front Porch Forum, this is getting incredible reviews. And then again, it is the story of a transgender woman who survived both the Nazis and the Soviet occupation. And the person who is, it's a solo presentation and they do 36 characters. And as I mentioned last time, our colleague Kim Ward is going to try to set up an interview. At the Savoy, one show only, get it on your calendars. Saturday, April 27th, 4 p.m., the Indigo Girls. <laughs> yeah. It's only life after all. I knew you wanted to see it. I do. do it. Get your tickets now. Carrier Coffee, Good Measure Brewing in Northfield. This is on Thursday, April 18th, starting at 7.30 p.m. This is the Queer Sex Ed Trivia and when I talked with Ann and Linda after the last show was taped, I reminded them that we participated in this at the Senior Center last fall. Yep. It, and you win prizes, and it's just so much fun. The other thing to keep on your calendars, Central Vermont Pride. And I'm not going to go through everything. We'll start breaking them down as it gets closer. But it's going to be starting on... Wednesday, May 29th, running through Tuesday, June 18th. There's going to be a drag show at Charlie O's. A oh, queer... Charlie O's is open again? It says tip your performers. All right. So maybe they're coming back just for us. Maybe. <laughs> There's also going to be a queer musician showcase at Three Penny Tap Room. On Friday, the thir May 31st is the celebration on the lawn, the march at the State House. <coughs> Linda's favorite queer critical mass bike ride. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there she, she's there. I'm there. Um, there are going to be films that are going to be showing at the Savoy, maybe on Rose. But I'm a cheerleader. Little Richard, I'm everything. There's going to be a pride cannabis panel. They're going to be showing before Stonewall, and there will be a short discussion afterwards. Queer erotic poetry at Fox Market on June 7th. I don't have any. And, um, and on the 8th is the Berry Pride Fest. And on June 9th, there's going to be a political teaching and networking at the old labor hall. And some faces you know might be there. Sam Starkwell? <laughs> May 14th is the election vote because Sam does have opposition now. Yes. Oh, no. I yes. We, we will talk later. Oh. Yeah. Well, back to the United States. Uh, well, we're going to confirm the United States <laughs> if we're involved here. But anyway. Back uh, to national news. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Kansas Governor Laura Kelly, a Democrat, voted to be in on voted a ban on gender-affirming medical care for transgender youth in the state. This divisive legislation targets a small group of Kansas by placing government mandates on them and dictating to parents how best to raise and care for their children, said Kelly in a veto message on Friday. I do not believe that this is a conservative value, and it's certainly not a Kansas value. Uh, so she beat it out and she's, uh, she talked about like how, you know, we, we can't have these uh, draconian issues here in the state. People, companies don't want to come right. when you have right. these kinds of, uh, of issues in your state and when you discriminate against workers and their families. So uh, 
stripping away f rights from Kansas and opening the state to extensive and unnecessary lawsuits. These bills would hurt our ability to continue breaking economic rent economic records. So, good for her. Yeah, that's a persuasive message, although then if you dig deeper, you find out that corporate America is playing both sides of they the aren't coin they, in many instances. Well, I think they're, I mean, I think they, they some of them play to the liberal um, audience for going to places, but you know, basically their bottom line is money. They just want people to spend money. I mean, there are times when I look at HRC's equity index and, you know, someone gets a 100% rating for LGBTQ plus issues, but they ha have abominable rating for supporting their workers. Exactly. Or, you know, I know. Uh, the Idaho State Legislature adjourned its 2024 session on Wednesday Having passed three new laws that target gender-affirming case, permit the practice of misgendering and dead naming in public schools, <sighs> and mm. define gender as a binary sexual concept. Republican Governor Brad Little signed all three bills, with some taking effect in just a few months. So, mm. I guess we're not going to visit Idaho. It wasn't on my list. I've never been. Okay. <laughs> I've been once on my way somewhere else. <laughs> Not, nothing negative. About the, I'm sure there are some very, very nice people in Idaho. It is long past time to say no to staying calm, patient, and quiet in the face of homophobia and transphobia. Today, it is time to shatter the silence. Originally founded as the Day of Silence in 1996, by the University of Virginia students, this day serves as a protest against the bullying and harassment of LGBTQ students across the United States. Students have opted to take a vow of silence in solidarity with queer youth who feel they cannot speak out because it would jeopardize their safety. <coughs> this collective silence becomes impossible to ignore. At the end of the day, students gather to break the silence, advocating for inclusion and ending bullying and harassment. So good for them. Yes. <laughs> and and um, I, I know everybody's going to be like truly interested in this, but I couldn't resist. There's a new film that delves into the early life and rise of Donald Trump. Oh, no. To set in premiere at this year's Cannes Film Festival. The Apprentice, starring Sebastian Stan as Trump and Jeremy Strong as Roy Cohen. Cohen. The notorious gay law lawyer who denied his homosexual through his death from AIDS in 1986 examines the future president's formative years in the 70s and 80s. New York real estate scene. The Ali Abbasi directed film portrays the mentor-prodigy relationship between Trump and Cohen offering insight into complex relationship between them over his long career. So I mention that because Roy Cohn was in it. But there's a film about Roy Cohn that's equally yeah. edifying, and you can see Trump's playbook. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, it's lie, 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 lie. And you know, never say you're sorry, never say anything about it. Just how push you... through. Yeah. 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 Okay, so the Florida, in Florida, the enactment of controversial anti trans bathroom laws has not only restricted access to public facilities, but has also spurred a wave of vigilant actions extending into private establishments. The Safety in Private Spaces Act prohibits transgender people from using state-owned bathrooms that align with their gender identity. The measure has emboldened some citizens to monitor and confront the suspect violating this law in various other locations, including restaurants, gyms, and cinemas, where the law doesn't apply. Uh, Rajay Narasinghe, a trans woman, experienced this firsthand when challenged at a restaurant, you don't belong in the bathroom, a fellow diner told her. Um, you need to get out. 
The incident echoed the trauma for transgender um, people uh, who transitioned. I, you know, so there's uh, enduring brutal attacks and discrimination over decades, decades. So I guess ugly, people are ugly. taking the law in their own hands in Florida. Ugly. Yeah. Oh, and this one I like. Starry straight men. <laughs> well. <laughs> Queer women just do it better. <laughs> A new report <laughs> is shedding light on why straight women have fewer orgasms than lesbians. And it's exactly the reason you'd expect. Published this month in the Journal of Social, Psychological, and Personality Science, the report included two surveys one of lesbian and straight women, another of bisexual women. The first at survey asked the mixed group of 476 how important they value orgasms during sex. While both lesbians and straight women valued climaxing the same, lesbians reported more clitoral stimulation and more orgasms overall than, and also found the same thing with bisexual women. So isn't that good? You're, you're studying up for the queer sex trivia contest. I know, I know. <laughs> and Ian's looking at me like, oh, God, why are you talking? I, sh I should be screening your stories. Here. <laughs> Come on, that's, a, you know, really. It's not information we didn't really already into it anyway, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So in the world where representation matters more than ever, the upcoming documentary, this is another clip, Queen of New York stands as a testament to the power of identity, activism, and community. Directed by the Emmy-nominated filmmaker Emma Fidel and starring the indomitable Marty Cummings, this groundbreaking film is set to premiere April 15th on the Advocate Channel. Who knew there was an Advocate Channel? Well, you? now we know. Yeah, I did. Know. Yeah, we Available know. to download on your mobile phone and your favorite streaming device, including Apple Store, Google Play, Roku, Apple TV, Fire TV, and Google TV, marketing a significant moment in LGBTQ plus media. So here is a clip of the Queen of New York. Thank you. Thank you for being are, are you here. Are really running for city council? I am, yeah. Listen up, girls. Here's the tea. One of New York's most popular drag queens is running for city council. She's running for office! Uh, I don't know. I, are people ready for that? I don't know. I love it. I love it. Hell yeah. Yeah. Some people thought a woman vice president was not cool, so they can go to hell. Yes, we're fighting for serious issues, but I'm trying to bring joy into politics because we've been so burnt out for years. This is a big deal. Marty Cummings could make drag and non-binary history because you already know politics should be for everybody. Drag is, was, and always will be political. It's going against the patriarchal system that's in place. Drag saved my life in many ways, I think. It will be a huge change in my life to step away from drag, and it won't be easy, but I'm ready. It's a fierce election, and Marty is gonna have to work. I'm running because it's time for change. We will win! So when I say fired up, you stay ready to go. Are you fired up? Ready to go! Are you fired up? Ready to go! New York City politicians are cut and go. We're all disengaged, and we're all really pissed off at the ways that things aren't working. So. Will this be a record year for LGBTQ elected officials? Will it shine a new light on identity and politics? Chow, I don't freaking know. Just buckle up for the ride, baby. Because it's never happened before. But who knows what this could bring? Okay, Ian. I'm Did you read. say where that was playing? I went through the whole thing. Okay. Advocate, <laughs> Roku, Apple, Fire, okay. Google. Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay.
I just wanted to make sure we have it covered. <laughs> I have so much to discuss with you right now. My last um, Europe story involves UK Black Pride, and it confirms that it's returning in 2024 by popular demand. And I'd like to show you a picture of Lady Phil Okoku Giyama, who stood down from the UK charity Kaleidoscope Trust to become the first CEO of UK Black Pride. Uh, it's the world's largest free Black Pride celebration. Uh, it's taken place in London since 2005. Uh, in 2022, more than 25,000 people came. Um, so they've announced that the event is going to happen, but all the um, potential attendees are saying, when? Give us the dates. Give us the dates. And the dates are still pending. Um, let's go to Asia. It's a beginning. India's opposition parties come out in favor of same-sex civil unions ahead of the election. And I have a picture now before you of um, a member of the LGBTQ community in Mumbai watching the judgment uh, by the Supreme Court, which declined to legalize same-sex marriage. But now they're, um, there's still activism about it, and the Communist Party and the Congress Party will include in their legislative agenda a law to recognize same-sex civil unions. The promise is a significant step after the Supreme Court in October declined to legalize same-sex marriage. And that was such a disappointment. Remember, yeah. they yeah. repealed Section uh, 377. Um, now we have another um, bad story from Asia. A British gay man has been tortured in Qatar, oh. and he's almost out of his LGBTQ medication, LGBTQ, HIV, sorry. HIV medication. Uh, his name is Manuel Guerrero. He's 44. I have a picture of him before you now. He's a British citizen, and he was arrested in a grinder scam. Oh. And so he spent all this time in prison, um, and his brother is agitating for his release because um, he's running out of his medication. Um, homosexuality, as we know in Qatar, is illegal. Um, he was arrested. He moved there. He's a Mexic joint Mexican citizen, and he moved there seven years ago for his work. Um, he was held in jail for nearly two months. Um, he had nighttime interrogations and um, was locked in solitary confinement once they found out he was HIV positive and refused to administer his medication. So he's running out of medicine wow. again. Uh, he went 38 days without a lawyer or a translator. He's a British resident, so it's up to the UK to get his release. And you know they say they're concerned, but nothing has happened. Um, as we may surmise, uh, situations for LGBTQ people in Qatar are awful. Security forces detain and abuse LGBTQ people. Uh, preventive security forces often force them to unlock their phones and take screenshots. Um, and Grindr was reached for comment, and they said, yeah, I mean, we're warning people. But in many of these countries, this is the only contact gay people yeah. have with each other. So they're in a tough spot, too. Um, on a positive note, Bangladesh's first mosque especially for transgender Muslims, has officially opened its doors. Wow. And now I have a picture of the uh, members of that mosque. <laughs> wow. uh, they're legally recognized as a third gender, and they have difficult times also. And uh, several members of the group reported being thrown out of their mosque, even though they're practicing Muslims. Um, and so uh, Hijira communities have gradually established dedicated spaces of safety in recent years, nice. uh, despite um, recent backlash. In 2020, I reported on this, the first Muslim school or hadrasa for Hajira students opened in Bangladesh um, was designed for safety, community, and healing. 
So this is good news from Bangladesh. More good news from Asia. Thailand is moving closer to legitimizing same-sex marriage as the bill sails through the Senate. If you have a clip in, you should probably get to it. Well, perfect. And I want to <laughs> get to um, African stories also. Well, I don't think we're going to have much time. Well, let's talk. Let's see a clip of an <laughs> Egyptian Canadian film called Queen Tut. It looks really good. After the loss of his mother, an Egyptian teenager leaves Cairo to live with his father in Toronto. Parachuted into the underground queer nightlife, he confronts his mother's death by taking up the ways of drag and becoming Queen Tut. Um, this is available on Hoopla on Roku, Cineplex Store, and Apple TV. So let's look at a clip of Queen Tut. Naveen, I barely recognized you. Good to see you. Come. We're developing this whole area from the ground up. I did the Kenisa like the Bible of the Bible when I came here. I didn't want to change the Kenisa to the Emirates. Good morning, homosexuals. I am taking donations. This is my favorite spot, and I'm just trying to collect money to save my bar. Where did you get that coat? This coat? Yeah. I made this coat. Do you sew? I want to learn this. This is my mother's. This is her legacy, and I'm, I'm finishing it for her. And what kind of thought is this? LGBTQ topia. And this is Cheyance. She is the big, 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 big boss. You know, she'll eat you alive, right? My name is Decaf. I like to put my stink on the stage. <laughs> I am oh, Habibti, your Lebanese queen, and you have now officially met every Middle Eastern queen in the city. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's almost too, too many. That's right. <laughs> I go by Taz DeVille, or Brian, but I am king of this uh -huh. castle. Honey, I'm tired as hell. The landlord can't wait on that offer forever. What's this? Well, it's our home. And then we're turning it into condos. What are you doing? Aligning yourself with these people. You don't even know them, Baba. You're kicking them out of their homes. We will never raise enough to save this place. Well, we have to do something. We have to try. Even if we lose, we're still family. Mandy's is part of LGBT history. And I'll be damned if I'm going to stand by and let you eradicate us from the history books. We will need names for the record. My name is Queen Tut. Nice. That looks great. I think we have to move on to Keith. Sorry. <laughs> I'll see if I can consolidate. I... Me too. Okay, first I'm going to go back and follow up on stories that have been reported on previous shows. In Maine, they had introduced basically a shield law for people coming to Maine for services that neither the practitioner, the person who is being referred, or the person receiving services would any of their information be disclosed back to their state of residence. And it got pulled because there were some significant problems in the language. They have cleaned that up. The bill has been reintroduced, and it is having its hearing this week. Good. So it looks as though Maine is about to become one of the sanctuary shield law states. Thank you very much. Great. New Hampshire, on the other hand. Oh. Sununu so just came out and said uh, he was for Trump. Oh. New, Ham New Hampshire, on the other side. Both their Senate and their House have passed anti-LGBTQ plus bills. One would prohibit transgender women from participating in sports on both a high school and collegiate level. The other would require teachers to disclose to parents when a student makes a comment relative to gender identity, sexual orientation. It both, there are two bills in each chamber. They have both passed both chambers. Now they need to reconcile them. However, in the past, what we've reported on is New, New Hampshire's um, attorney general has said, 
we have non-discrimination statutes. Your new law would fly in the face of our non-discrimination. So if these do get enacted, expect some type of court challenge. But on a positive, because we need a positive Sorry. every now and then, stop the Pope. Littleton, New Hampshire, we spend time talking about them. You know, the member of the city council who is also a state senator going after the art center because they had a performance of La Cache au Faux. Right. They had um, equity and inclusion in their posters. Well, they just had an election. And guess who didn't get reelected? However, the person who did get elected to that seat is the core co-chair of North Country Pride. <laughs> so Littleton seems to have made a statement about this is how, who we view we are as a community Good. despite what others might be saying. Really quickly looking at our legislature, first a brief comment. There's a lot of controversy about Governor Scott's choice for the new commissioner of education, secretary of education. And part of where this is coming from is this person has no experience working in a public school. They have never been a teacher, a principal, or a superintendent. Their entire experience has been a strategist helping for-profit charter schools. Oh. And I want you to think in terms of what Vermont has been going through with the Alliance Defending Freedom, the Heritage Foundation, yep. and how they have been going after our schools and trying to get public dollars to go to their private charter schools. So that may explain some of the controversy. Things that are happening, S-278, the Comparative Negligence Bill, has passed both the House and the Senate. It's on its way to the governor. So if you are someone in a civil suit who has been the victim of, they can no longer try and attach a level of blame that you were responsible for what occurred and they can deduct from any settlement that's raised. Oh, right. Um, S289, this is the bill that was about advertising and products and the promotion for children. What must be taken into consideration is the best interest of the child. It passed the Senate by unanimous vote. It's now in House Commerce and they're doing a hearing on it Thursday. The bill that Taylor Small had introduced about safe injection sites is being taken up by Senate Health and Welfare on Wednesday with the intention of voting it out. We'll see what happens following that because Governor Scott had said he doesn't really support this. Yeah, he would be looking at that. vetoing yeah. it. So let's see if they have the majorities in both chambers so that that does get enacted. There are other, the other bill that has passed both chambers, H363, this is the Crown Act, prohibiting discrimination based on certain hairstyles. So Vermont, Vermont will be joining a dozen other states that have already enacted this. That is so, so crazy, that whole discriminatory thread. And, and Sadia was one of the people who testified saying, let me tell you my experience. <coughs> no kidding. If you think this doesn't happen, let me give you some reality. It does happen. We so, can testify to that. Yeah. Yes. Well, on top of my list of, this was really, I thought this was an interesting article about U.S. Women's National Soccer Team member Corbin Albert, and she is receiving a lot of condemn condemnation for her social media posts mocking LGBTQ plus people, including one celebrating the injury of legendary player Megan Rapinoe. Rapino. Oh, that's awful. Albert entered U.S. team's match against Japan on Saturday, uh, 78 minutes into the game. Um, 
and she was booed by uh, wow. the uh, people at the game because of her um, her bad behavior um, and, and, and giving really bad posts. Um, and, and she said she wanted to thank God because um, Megan hurt her ankle and could not play in the game. <gasps> and um, so um, Megan uh, came out and condemned her for um, what she what she's saying and how much it hurts people and all LGBT people. And she said, this is what she said, because if you aren't, all believe, if you all believe in this hate, and kids are literally kidding themselves because of this hate, wait TF up. Signing the message with yours truly, number 15, the number Rapino wore before her retirement and which Albert wears now. Ooh. So. But and people are waking up, you know, like the Littleton story. Yeah. Yeah. I really think I'm feeling optimistic despite everything. For a month, bomb threats have been reported at various Planet Fitness locations. Uh, following a concerted social media campaign against the gym <clears throat> chain led by Chara Reshek and her anti-LGBT coup plus libs of TikTok social media account. Apparently, the chain is in support of uh, transgender people going into the women or men's yep, sure. locker rooms. Uh, it branches in states ranging from Alaska to Connecticut to Virginia and elsewhere have been threatened with bombs. And so, um, and there was also one uh, in a, a chain in Alaska, Fairbanks uh, reports. So they're going after them. And we still have that crazy place up in our mall. Hobby Lobby. Holly, yeah. I, I refuse to speak its name. I know. <laughs> I only did because Linda couldn't remember. <laughs> uh, Jude, and I'm just going to do one more, and Anna, like, that'll give you about another four minutes or okay, so. Okay, I should. Okay. And we've got the, tr and the trivia answer oh, is quite long. To, okay. June Armstrong stepped one foot in front of the other, balancing on a tightrope stretched across the steps of Louisiana's State Capitol building. Nearby, a paperweight held down three printed out pages of legislation, including one bill that would require parental consent for students to change their pronouns at school. An audience looked on as Armstrong lifted a microphone to speak. Who wants to grow up in a state that hates you so much, asked Armstrong 16, who identifies as queer and recently changed his pronouns. While looking at the crowd, he stepped off the rope and onto the ground. Two classmates then picked up the rope and wrapped it around his waist. All they want is for you to hate yourself, Armstrong said to the audience. That is the cruelest form of violence I can imagine. The stunt was part of a 45 minute long performance by students from New Orleans, Benjamin Franklin High School. Uh -huh. and the cast of 13 students traveled to Baton Rouge to protest several anti-LGBT plus bills up for consideration by Republican controlled House and Senate the proposals include the pronoun use bill as well as restriction on same sex based bathroom use, effectively banning transgender people from using bathrooms. Another bill would restrict school employees from discussing their sexual orientation, which critics say mimics Florida's don't say gay law. So, okay. So, I, if you don't mind, I'll do the trivia very sure, quickly, and, de oh, and then you'll have whatever's left. You can depress me. <laughs> so, Independent Bookstore, 1969, Oscar Wilde Bookstore opens in Manhattan, followed in 1973 by Giovanni's Room in Philadelphia, Lambda Rising in 1974 in Washington, D.C., and in 1979, a Different Light in L.A. Oscar Wilde closed in 2009. Lambda Rising closed in 2010. 
a different light closed in 2011. Not a good track record no. here. Giovanni's room faced closure in 2014. The community said, we need you. We are not giving you up. They stepped in. They volunteered. They helped create a new business model. It is still open and holds the distinction of being the oldest LGBTQ plus bookstore in the U.S. I've been there. I know, isn't it great? Yeah. OK, thank you. Um, all I have to say, I, the Uganda <laughs> court has upheld the anti-LGBTQ law with a couple of um, changes, meaning if you can still rent to LGBTQ people and you you can't be rewarded for reporting them. But you know, the substance of the bill remains the same. And Ugandan activist, um, a Ugandan activist has escaped. You, uh, his name is Stephen Kubaye. I have a picture before you now. Um, he was, you know, two, he was followed. Uh, he was a vocal activist. He was followed. Two men came on a motorcycle, went for his neck to stab Ooh. him. Uh, he blocked it, and then they stabbed him in the stomach. He lay on the ground calling for help. Nobody responded. Um, finally, he called another Ugandan, he, you know, on the phone. Uh, but anyway, so he has safely been uh, emigrated to Canada, courtesy of Rainbow Railroad. Yes. So that's good news. And one more good thing. I want to introduce you to Samia Nkrumah, who is uh, Kwame Nkrumah's daughter who is a feminist activist um, in Ghana who has said, don't assent to this brutal, unjust, anti-gay bill. Yes. So All right. good for Samia and Kruma. And she said it to the president. Good, and she's Even still better. there. Yeah, she's, sure, <laughs> sure. I have her picture. Observe it now. All right. Kwame and Kruma, I hadn't thought of him in years. He's got other kids, too. Mm. What is he famous for? Well, he founded, he liberated Ghana. And then he was, you know, overthrown and out of power. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine did a very interesting paper in college, my was friend Alex. Pardon me? Was he liberal? Well, he was better than the... Uh, um, the current one? Than the regime that he overthrew. Ghana was very, has a very interesting history. I wish I knew yeah. more about it. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. So with that... I know, except for what Ian tells me. <laughs> I know, they've taken a turn to the right now with this anti-gay bill yeah. influenced by by Uganda. So do you have anything else? No. Rui? No. No? So I guess on that note... Well, um... What? <laughs> yes? I just hate to let the time pass. Do we have any entertainment commentary? I went to see Civil War. Uh-huh. And um, it was mixed. Uh, you know, I didn't find it that great, but many people do. Ebert does. For oh. Instance. Our, I for thought, huh? Ebert is dead. No, because he just wrote something. Are you sure? I think it's his, yes, I'm sure. Oh, okay. Because it's it, my review. Must be Ebert Publications or something. Oh, maybe. But we saw Love Lies Bleeding. That was entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this was kind of like, well, what you'd expect from a movie called uh, a Civil War in the United States. But Dystopian. Yeah, very dystopian. Okay. And I like dystopian, but this one is... Okay. So anyway, on that note, remember... Resist. Resist. <laughs>